Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's video we are doing a My Mods Tools and Add-ons Part 2 as I got a lot of really great feedback from the first one so let's go ahead without any further delay and get started. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, folks, so for this part two video, I'm going to try to be a little faster than I was in the last one. No promises. We all know I like to ramble, especially if it's something that I get excited about. If you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you'll know that to be true. And that's just one of those things that we have to deal with together. So giving our first add on here on the list today is MSFS Community Downloader. This is a fantastic add on for managing many of the great add ons and mods that we use in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And here's a list of just some of the ones that you have here we have everything from the cj4 there's your g1000 3000 g3x the flyby wire etc now the flyby wire i believe is using the stable version however it's also important to remember with the flyby wire that flyby wire has their own installer um, now the thing that i really enjoy about this is it works very similarly to add-ons linker in the aspect that for example um, by default, it's going to look for the community folder. However, I can customize where each one of these installs independently. So for example, if I wanted my CJ4 to install directly into the community folder, but let's say I wanted my G3000 and G3X here to install into my add-ons mod folder, that way I can add and remove them at will, um, I can do that as well. The other very, very nice thing that I enjoy about this is when it is detected that your package has updated, you will see an update button here and a, I believe it's a yellow down arrow telling that you have an update available. So it's a, it's a very nice tool for some of the bigger add-ons. You also have this add package button, which creates the ability, if you can get the GitHub repository, uh, you can actually create your own um, um, repositories to monitor. Um, and therefore, you know, increase the list at which this thing is uh, uh, managing your downloads. It's a really, really awesome tool. I truly enjoy having this one a lot. I use it for um, pretty much everything that's listed here, as well as a couple of others. Um, I'm not showing my own, just so that way I can get moving on and, and try to keep this a bit shorter than last time. But highly, highly recommend that you guys at least give it a shot. Um, watch some videos on it. There's a couple different tutorials that I found out there on this one. Um, it's really, really convenient. Um, to be able to manage all of these aircraft with this simple uh, tool. It's a very, very nice tool. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Make sure you guys grab it down in the link's description. The next one here is actually one that I haven't talked about in a long time, but I still use on occasion. And this is called uh, simply adjust position and you can save locations. And then you can see everything that else it does. Bro broadcast a four flight sky demon MA or MD flight Garmin watch app. Um, it is a really awesome tool for simply moving your aircraft around. I cannot tell you how many times like I will um, you know, go to the world map in Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'll pick a parking spot and next thing you know, the nose of my aircraft is sticking into a gas pump or you know, some barrier or some building, etc. Um, or maybe I want to move my plane over to the water or something. This is a really awesome tool. So when we come, let me pull up the correct screen here. This is the screen, the main screen that pulls it up. So let's say you spawn into the simulator. Okay, you're in your cockpit. And like I said, one of the aforementioned scenarios exists. Let's say your, your nose is sticking in a hangar, right, with the door shut. What you would do is just simply find this uh, application and, and where you have it installed or really just where the folder is, hit the executable. And then you just hit the, the oops, <laughs> I can't click on it now, can I? There we go. You would just hit the back arrow here and the aircraft would start moving back or you could rotate it. You can hit control and it will increase the rotation speed as you can see here, um, or movement speed, increase the distance. You can teleport, you can save uh, different directions. Uh, you can save different positions. It's a really, really awesome tool. Um, I tend to use, for example, things like uh, if, if I'm saving my approach, right? Let's say I get into a really nice approach. I'm at the initial fix and I want to save that location. 
For that kind of action, I tend to still use um, Sky Dolly because it also remembers the aircraft configuration. However, when it comes to neat parking spots, landing areas, maybe somewhere that I'd like to start a video from in the future or start a flight from, um, like in the Caribbean, out in the water, right? Obviously, you know, I can't go into the world map right now and just take my aircraft down to the water and tell, you know, a seaplane to start from the water. and It, it doesn't work. Um, so that's where this tool would come in really handy. If you have locations like that, maybe you're taking off from some island that's your own, right, in, in, in paradise there and uh, you want to be able to save that location for a later use in your seaplane all right this is where this would come in handy you know you could just hit a button boom next note there you are so really really awesome little application works flawlessly every time i've ever tried to use it i've never had a single problem with it hasn't been updated in a long time and i think that's because it doesn't need to uh, you know I, I used it just a couple days ago so um anyway i uh hope that you guys uh, give this one a shot i certainly like it and uh let's move on to the next one all right, the next three tools that we're going to talk about is um, the, I get questions on these constantly. So let's go ahead and just get right into it, I guess. First one here is Shift Z Stats. People are always asking, what is that icon on your toolbar that looks like a Z? I have cannot tell you how many comments that I've seen on this. Um, and this is what it is. It's called Shift Z Stats. And this is a really, really awesome application that gives you a ton of data. Um, and it's from Ambitious Pilots. These guys do fantastic mods. I wish they'd do more. Um, I don't know what they would be, but I, I could come up with something, I'm sure. But here's an example of what the first page looks like. So when you, you literally, you're flying along and you hit Shift and Z on your keyboard. And it brings up your latitude and longitude coordinates. Right now we have our altitude, magnetic heading, current airspeed, our wind and direction and speed, um, our frames per second. Um, and that looks like uh, G's on the aircraft and fuel percentage and sim rate. So all really handy stuff. And it brings up, there's actually two different pages of the stats. Um, and then you just type shift Z again to close it. But uh, it's just one of those little tools that you wouldn't think would be as critical as it is but it truly is you know especially when you're doing like long flights or or doing content creation like i do you know you'll be flying along and all of a sudden you start noticing things are starting to tank or maybe something's lagging you start so then you're starting to wonder you know uh is it my frame rate whatever boom sh quick shift z bam i know what my frame rate is uh, and that's what I primarily use it the most for, but there's been plenty of occasions where I've used it for, or actually, no, that's not true. I use it quite often for the wind direction as well, um, because I don't like using the in-game ATC. I hate the in-game ATC. I think it's garbage, and that's just my personal opinion. You know, we're each entitled to our own, uh, but I do not like it. Um, so, you know, getting wind direction, things like that for me, um, I use all these different little tools that are available. Um, and so I highly recommend that you guys give it a shot. It's a fun one to have, and if you don't want to use it, you know, it, it doesn't intrude on anything, doesn't cause a disturbance. And then if you do need it, shift Z on your keyboard and boom, you've got yourself an easy, uh, an easy use add on. Let's move to the next. Next one is a tool that I hope that many of you are no longer stranger to, and that is toolbar pushback again by ambitious pilots. And that's what I'm telling you. These guys do fantastic work. Uh, this is a toolbar um, <laughs> pushback tool, as I just said. It kind of looks like this. This is what it looks like on your toolbar. Simply click on it, brings up this menu. This menu can be dragged off screen, put onto other screens, whatever it may be. You can have you have access to everything that we have access to before in some of the other toolbar or uh, the pushback mods. Uh, your jetway, your stairs, baggage, catering, power, etc. Uh, your different doors, parking brake control. Now, here's what I really like about it. Here's what separates this one from some of the others that I have seen and loved in the past is the way that the pushback is managed. Now you can eat, tell it to go forward, tell it to reverse, you can tell it to hold, you can change the tug speed, tug direction. Now here's the thing that I like about the tug direction, the tug direction can also be controlled with your rudder pedals. Uh, that's a really awesome feature for, especially for that immersion. Speaking of immersion, there is also a, in the latest releases, um, there's an audio um, sequence that plays, uh, you know, cockpit to ground, you know, requesting pushback, blah, blah, the tug starts talking to you, tells you to release your parking brake, all that cool, all that stuff, right? Everything that you would, you know, hear from a pushback service, you know, um, as best can be simulated. And I love things like that. Anything that adds those sounds, you know, whether it be radio communication, outside sounds, cockpit sounds, doesn't matter. Anything that increases the sound uh, quality and, and the things that you would hear increases that, that audio immersion is going to 
drastically improve your immersion in the simulator. You know, people do not uh, realize how much of your immersion comes from your audio, uh, auditorial senses versus anything else. So on top of all the very neat pushback features and tools that it has available for managing your aircraft and your pushback, you also get that audio experience as well, which I thought was really fun. So um, anyway, definitely give this one a shot, guys, if you haven't tried it. Again, very nice to have it very conveniently on your toolbar. Makes it much, much easier than, again, as I mentioned, having to deal with the in-game ATC. I hate the in-game ATC. I'm probably going to say it one more time. I think there's one more thing that pops up where I will probably be in a position where I'm going to say it. So forgive me ahead of time. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Next mod, as you saw, is the no handlebar mod. What the no handlebar mod is, is we all know that on this screen, okay, you can see that little down arrow right there that is always up on the screen. Every time you move your mouse, that uh, that handlebar is there. That's the handlebar right there. That little white upside down triangle right there. Sorry, not diamond. Um, that's the handlebar. And so when we uh, install this mod, that handlebar is gone. And it's still the functionality is the same. You move your mouse up to the top of the screen and, and all of your toolbar options appear. But it makes it really, really nice because you don't get that immersion breaker with this white triangle just hanging off the top of your screen for no reason. And then on top of that, it makes it significantly better for things like screenshots and whatnot. So it's really nice, simple, but very convenient. And you'll be surprised how much you appreciate that one. Um, it, it's just a lot better than what you think it is. There's actually a change log here for it. Oh, updated for the symmetry. I've actually never had to update this one, but as you can see here, on October, well, back in October it was updated. But uh, anyway, it works just fine for me as as it, it was. So I haven't had any problems with it, haven't had to worry about updating it. So again, fun, simple mod uh, that I really think you guys will try out and enjoy. This one here is fantastic. This is JD's Checklist in-game toolbar mod. Now, um, this one is currently not installed on mine, and that's because I keep forgetting to do it. Um, but um, this is fantastic. If any of you have been really digging around FlightSim.2 or any of the other websites for very long, you hopefully by now have heard of JD and JD's checklist. He does fantastic checklists for these aircraft, especially for beginners. They're laid out very, very nicely. They're very, very thorough, but they don't get to the point where they're overwhelming. Um, they're great to have, and he's got a ton of different aircraft. Here's all the aircraft that he currently has available in this version for the JD's checklist mod. So you install this mod, it puts an item up on your toolbar that you would just click on. And it's also, as you can see here, VR capable. That's what we're seeing here, we're seeing that in VR. Um, but you, you open it up and right now you can see it says the Piper P44. There's a button, I believe down at the bottom, it's like arrows and you just cycle the pages over until you find the checklist that you want. And you would cycle through this list of aircraft here. Um, and again, these, these add-ons or these checklists are fantastic. They're great to have on. Um, I need to get significantly better about following my checklists and his checklists are something that is just a, uh, a godsend to have in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So to JD, thank you for all your hard work with these. And then this panel is, is wonderful. I absolutely love it. So uh, definitely add this to your inventory. You guys will definitely not regret it. If you fly any of these aircraft or multiple of these aircraft, you will not regret having this one installed. Moving into our next one, we have another aircraft for you. Last time I talked to you guys about the TVM 930 improvement mod. This is the DA62 improvement mod. Uh, this is another one that much like the, D, uh, the TVM 930 has received a lot of really quality of life improvements, uh, some visual features. However, um, Mr. Tommy here has gone much further than that and has done a ton of uh, performance impacts to this aircraft as well. Uh, there are a lot uh, of uh, change logs that you guys can go through here. Let me see if I can pull them up here. Um, that you guys can see just some of the work that he has done with this mod and what it does to this aircraft. It, this is probably, if I were to compare it to another one, this would be closer to like the CJ4 modifications, the A320 uh, for the DA62. It is a very, very well done mod um, and uh, really brings to life the DA62 to a what you would expect to be 
uh, in a real world performance um, aspect. The DA62 is one that actually I want to get further uh, into. I need to fly it a lot more. I haven't flown it very often since its launch, uh, but when I was, I was flying this mod, and even back then it was great, and the differences were like night and day, and in some ways it makes the aircraft more challenging, and in some it makes the aircraft much easier because things start to make more sense as you start reading up on some documentation. Uh, the documentation that Tommy also includes with the uh, DA62 installation is also fantastic. So you're not just getting a mod, an improvement mod with this, you're also getting some very, very thorough uh, uh, documentation, especially in regards to FADIC. If you don't understand what FADIC is, he does a great job of explaining it and how it works. Um, so definitely give this one a shot if you like the DA62. Uh, it's a fast little airplane. It's fun for, um, you know, cruising, you know, town hopping. Uh, it's really a great little airplane, and that's what I'm saying. I, I really want to get better about uh, flying it more frequently. So, anyways, that is the DA62 Improvement Mod by Mr. Tommy Mixer. Let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, almost done here. Our next one on the list for today is going to be Little Nav Map. Um, Little Nav Map is an absolutely amazing, extremely robust flight, flight planning and navigational tool. Not only does it track live position of your aircraft in the simulator, it's also extremely, extremely capable for planning things such as fuel load, performance, takeoff, speeds, you name it. Um, it has, there are a ton of different aircraft profiles out there for this that you can actually download and install, uh, created by real world pilots and people with real world numbers, uh, that, uh, help you calculate all of the required information to complete your flight. This tool does so much, like just take a moment and soak in. I, I highly recommend you guys pause the video at this point. Just take a moment and soak in all of the options that you're seeing here on the screen. Um, it's just, it's, I'm blown away by it. Now, and the other thing that is the biggest, the biggest thing to understand about this one here is it is free. It is a completely free program that, I mean, I'm just going to slowly scroll through this guys and you guys can get an idea of what's going on here. This is weather information here that we're seeing here. Wind sources. Yep. You can put notes, little sticky notes at various locations. Uh, instructions here, some of that flight planning information that we were talking about, different waypoints. That's your departure ACIO, sorry. Um, here's your flight plan information down over here on the left hand side. I mean, just a ton of fantastic, extremely detailed information. It's It really can be a one and done tool. Um, and I could actually I could and should do an entire video series on this application and its capabilities. It's really amazing. Um, so make sure you guys give this one a shot. Um, it, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little overwhelming at first. When you're new to it and you first install it, you're gonna go, no, no, this is too much. Slow down, take your time, um, really dive in step by step, just sort of work your way through, watch some YouTube videos on it. You know, like I said, I will definitely, uh, I think I'm going to start working on some. That would be a really good idea. I think that could be very helpful. Um, but it is going to be a little, um, like I said, overwhelming, maybe intimidating when you first open it up. But I promise this is one of those ones that once you get familiar with it and comfortable with it, it does so much. It's going to be one of those ones you never want to leave the, the deck without. So, uh, again, that's a little nav map. Again, completely free software. Uh, Alex Projects is the uh, owner here. And, uh epically grateful for this particular piece of software. Absolutely wonderful. And last on my list today is giving you a purpose to fly. As fun as it is just popping in one day and say, I'm gonna fly from A to B, I'm gonna fly from Z to J, you know, it's a heck of a lot more fun when you have a purpose to fly, when something is telling you, you know, I'm giving you a mission base. Um, and that is exactly what NeoFly does. I want you guys read it up here. Here it is. NeoFly, NeoFly is a free career add-on. Now there are payware um, plugins that you can add to it. But even then, um, if we go to let me find those. Well, here actually, take a moment, guys. Pause the screen and then take a look at this here. I highly recommend that. And then let's also go to the store here. 
Okay, and then you can get all of this stuff with donations, okay? Real voices, you get the FBO, um, all kinds of different stuff. And again, they're just donation based, so it's totally up to you, but it's not required to truly enjoy um, the um, Neofly simulation. Neofly simulator is absolutely just, it's, it's too much fun, it truly is. Um, the developer has done such a great job and the, the missions that you get and the purposes you get are very diverse. Um, I have been asked before, um, you know, Neofly versus, um, I can't remember what it was called now. Anyway, I can't remember the, the name of its competitor, but there's a payware uh, competitor to Neofly and I own it. I can't remember the name of it, um, not for the life of me. And you guys can obviously tell right away then which one I prefer. And I will tell you, I would do not prefer Neofly because it is free. That is not the reason why. I prefer Neofly because it is more robust, it is more diverse, it is more enjoyable, uh, the immersion features are a bit better, um, it seems to be far more capable, um, and again, at the very end, if you want to add that in, yes, and it's free. So, highly recommend these guys. Let me know if I missed any that you guys think are worth mentioning here. There are tons and tons of add-ons and mods and things like that that are just absolutely wonderful for the simulation, uh, especially for flight simulators in general, whether we're talking about X-Plane P3D, you know, FSX, if you want to go back that far, and of course, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, but I think that, uh, I think you guys will really enjoy everything that's been mentioned here today. Again, if you know of any better tools and things that need to be shared on this channel, by all means, let me know. I love checking things out. And uh, as usual, folks, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you in the next one.